Visually overstimulated? What does that even mean? We got Ezra to eat. Even when he was refusing to eat, I did this one weird thing, and it was because we figured out that he was overstimulated visually. My husband and I have five kids and our two youngest are autistic. So there's a myth out there that I just want to put to rest. And it's, hey, autistic people, autistic kids, aren't affectionate and that's just not true ezra is very affectionate just in his own way and so he might not come and hold my hand or cuddle with me like like my other kids might but what he does see look you can hold my finger for a sec want this wants more there you go so what he will do is he will come up from behind and give me a hug. He'll come up from behind, just like this, back to back, where we're like this. And he will hold my hand, and he'll cuddle with me, and he'll lean back, huh? And so he likes that because then he doesn't have to see me. He doesn't have to see whatever he's seeing that's over overstimulating, and he can still have that connection physically because he is affectionate. And another thing that he did just last night, which was kind of cool, we were going over his um, ABC board and I was um, getting him to like spell things. And he came and sat right on my lap, but he wasn't looking at me, he was looking out, right? And he just like leaned back. And he wanted that compression, he really likes, you know, that hard compression feeling and he just wanted to cuddle and he want, he was very affectionate that way and so don't think that just because someone has autism that they aren't affectionate it's just not true try and look for the ways they are affectionate because they probably are just in their own way ezra is overstimulated visually and just watch what he does well what he doesn't do he really likes these pretzels they have little peanut butter in them and I cut it up so he can see the peanut butter as well. Ezra, you want some? He's pushing it away. Why would he push away something that I know he likes? Ezra, you want some? But when he doesn't have to look at me handing him anything, then let's see what happens. What? He's not verbal right now, so he can't really tell us and explain why, but it's very obvious that, you know, there's too much information, there's too much to see, and so when he sees things coming towards him, sometimes he just kind of has this reaction of putting, pushing it away. Three years ago, we sold our house, moved into an RV, my husband and I quit our jobs, and we went full-time with our five kids and visited all the national parks in the US. We share about that journey and our unique normal of five kids and two on the spectrum. Please consider subscribing. So Ezra is not verbal, so he can't explain to us word through words. He wants his cords. Hold on. He can't explain to us through words what it's like, what he's experiencing. But anyone out there who is overstimulated visually, um, please tell us in the comments what is it like. What do you experience? Why is it uncomfortable? Since Ezra doesn't talk yet, he can't tell us exactly what it's like and how he experiences this, what he sees. Like, please tell us in the comments, what do you see when you are overstimulated visually? And it's important for a caregiver or parent to notice, you know, my child is overstimulated visually, so how can I kind of create a world a little bit better so that they can have more positive experience in it. They can show affection in a different way. They can eat in a different way. Different parts of their life may look a little unique, um, but you need to figure out what you can do to help them and support them because maybe they're overstimulated visually or overstimulated in some other way. I know our son, Simon, is overstimulated by a sense of smell. Even when I'm cooking in the kitchen and it's a good smell, if the smell is strong, he cannot be in that kitchen. I remember even doing something with a toy in front of him and he went, ew, and I noticed didn't even notice at the time, but once he reacted, I would smell the toy and the smell of the toy was kind of strong. And I was like, oh, I didn't even notice, but he noticed and it bugged him. So <laughs> we can do little things to help their environment just be a little easier for them to experience. We as parents don't know what it's like for him. We can just guess through his behavior and through his emotions that he's, that he's showing. 
You don't want it? Mm. Go behind and it works. Yep. Like, so interesting. He's even expecting it from behind. Yeah, he, from he behind. knows he wants it. He wants it. He doesn't want it to come from the front. These things are pretty good. There's a link below in the description for you to join our ASD club where we do weekly video chat calls and answer your questions and talk all things autism. Ezra, you want this? You want it? <laughs> as long as it's coming from behind, we're okay. Yeah. Even goes it, towards it. Yeah. So if you have a child who's visually overstimulated, this might be a trick that you, you know, just might want to try and see if it works, see if it helps. Especially with food that you know they like, that once it's in their mouth, they're like, oh, this tastes good, you know? So that happens all the time with Ezra. He'll, he'll like something, food or a drink, and then the next day he'll push it away and we'll be so confused. We're like, this was like your favorite yesterday. And when that happens, we realize, oh, he's just, Overstimulated visually, we need to just kind of put it in his mouth from behind and then he'll eat it. Because it's important that these kids get the food that they need and that they can eat. If you want to see 12 signs of autism stimming, you can see that video here and our autism playlist is here.